speed fast <laughs> came by to show us his approach to melody and some of his beautiful slide playing. Click the link below if you want to check out the six video series on this in the master class. Alan likes to use exotic guitars and effects. Their link is down there also. That was awesome. Oh, well, thank you. But, um, you know, I think the same people ask me about playing over chord changes all the time. And I think back to what I did when I was a student to, to to learn that, and one of the things I did was uh, just work on a simple progression that's just modal. Like it was just like the, uh, those are just Dorian modes, A Dorian and C sharp Dorian. Right. But what it kind of trains in your brain is that muscle to see that new um, shape underneath your fingers wherever you are. You know, and the problem a lot of students have when they see those kind of progressions, whether it's Maiden Voyage or one of those songs, it's just kind of move like you know the same modes up and down the neck. They'll they'll play like, then they'll go. And they yeah. just go up a minor third, and that's that's like I say, that's not without a charm either. But it's kind of cheating, and it's better if you have like an uh, uh, an idea that's kind of moving up the fretboard. Like... You know, I just kind of guess continuing my idea going straight up the next. Right. So the melody continues, and it's an extension of the melody. It just it just adapts. You kind of connect to the yeah. closest one, yeah, and and it's. And that, yeah, muscle that, you, that muscle that you end up like using in your brain to kind of see that new, because it's multitasking, you know, you're actually, you're just kind of seeing a different bunch of lights, you know, notes come on. I think they used to have a MIDI guitar that would like change like lights under the, you know, if you play an A minor scale, it'd play the A minor dots. It's kind of like that in your brain, seeing those new patterns underneath. And you can kind of, I think you can develop that just playing over a chord progression that's as simple as that. And it's like, so you're here. But your hand hasn't moved, and right. so that, that's what's beautiful about those two chords and that's, together. And that's a way to do it, like, you know, try to force yourself to stay within a four or five right. fret range yeah. and play over both the chord changes. Then go to the next four or five, and let the chords go by, but stay right there and force yourself not to not to jump into your familiar boxes. Where that but that's you know, another way, because the way you just said, too, was just continuing the melody in either direction. That, that's beautiful, too. All the half steps you can use to help aid you, too. This is in the scale, like, uh, mm. I'm taking aim, I am like, Picking on A minor so much today. Fine. But, uh... So what's the odd note that you just threw? Well, it was a melodic minor, the sharp, um, I'm sorry, the uh, major seven. But it sounds great. You could do that too. Of course. Yeah. Too. But if you do, you know... It's quite pretty, you know, but so whole... you're just bending the rules when you play. 
the I'm just major just, seventh in there. Yeah, I'm just kind of tweaking your ear a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Just for a moment, we're just shifting to a new mode. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, uh, that's um, which is cool. You know, just trying to once again, it kind of makes you see the whole fretboard in a different way because you know you can't think in little boxes. You've got to think, you yeah. know, big yeah. patterns and big boxes. Yeah. You know, which is you know. The legato thing really lends itself to that because you do so much with hammer-ons and stretches anyway. There are movements to, also in the legato world um, that I found that can help me get around the fretboard. And one of them is, a, is like a, I used to call it, a, when I was trying to explain it to people, like a finger displacement type of thing, which sounds painful, but it'd be like a... Where I, where I go, we're in A minor again. The people's key. Yeah. So... Okay. So then you end up end up. Yeah. So then so you go. So by changing out the third finger for the second one, your hand is in a whole new position. Right. Yeah. And it is uncomfortable because it's a stretch. Yeah. But then you can. Oh, that's cool. So you get you can get it down smooth. Can you do that really slowly? And you right. stretch it like that. There's only yeah. two strings, so yeah. you could take that kind of concept anywhere. Um, uh, so that sets you up, you know, on a hold from there to there, as opposed to. So by advancing up with a, a different finger, your hand right. moves forward up the neck, and I'm you go gonna, higher. So I can go. Beautiful. And you, I just saw you slip in a little of that by Rado. Oh yeah. I, I, I still probably do a lot of that. I've always considered certain notes to be anchors and like home base, and you have you're choosing like ninths and fourths. To yeah, be anchors. it's awesome. Sometimes you get away with it. 
in fact, it, sometimes it sounds a little obtuse, but um, yeah, that's the beauty of you know playing over chord changes when you can. Yeah. I mean, I look at whenever I'm, whenever I see I hear students playing over chord changes, like they'll have a progression that's like uh, five chords that are all in the key of C or something, and they'll just you, I can tell when they're just running a C scale. Yeah, right. That's yeah. that's on the other hand is that's a pretty bad thing to do because then you know you have a progression like a. Or whatever, all the key, and they're just going. You know, <laughs> right. and you can't hear the song at all. Yeah, that's one exercise I have my students do. Sometimes they say, "Okay, I want you to play through this song, but I want you only to play roots and thirds," and it really forces them to really. You can really hear the song. Uh, that so way. roots and thirds of the the actual chord that's being played in that's that right. moment. That's okay. right. Not of the mode. This is one of the songs they use um, uh, in classes a lot. All the things you are. Yeah, the melody is. <laughs> All chord tones. Now, if a student were to play this, I mean, we could analyze this progression: F minor, B flat, B flat minor, E flat seven, A flat, and E flat, all from the key of A flat major, right? Yeah, right. So you right. could play. If you play those chords again. Yeah. I could just roll off A flat and go like. But it doesn't really sound like I'm playing the song. Yeah. Words, if you took the chords away, yeah. and I was just going. Like, you're not going to hear the song. Oh, but if point. I were to play, if you were not to play chords, I was just going. Uh, Once again, you just train that same muscle to kind of multitask and see those notes. But that's yeah. all the notes are coming from the same place. But you're kind of seeing the different. Um, it's forcing you to play the notes. I mean, when I used to listen to Joe Pass play, I mean, he did some genius, friggin' incredible stuff. But when he did his most melodic stuff, it was really it wasn't outside. Yeah. Or Wes Montgomery stuff wasn't always yeah. outside. It yeah. was just sweet in the pocket, played chord tones. They had like, no the thing they had is their time was so great. Beautiful, Alan. Cool, Em. Thank you. That's all I know. <laughs> it's not all you know, but it's plenty, plenty for us to learn. <laughs> it's fun.